You are an influencer by the smell you give off, the aroma you create, the vibes you give. <laughs> I know it sounds strange, but there we are. I'll unpack that in a few minutes, okay? Uh, but if this is new, if you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe uh, and that bell icon that will show you when the next video is up. Anyway, so here we are. We're exploring the fruit of the Spirit. This is kind of the conclusion. I'm putting it all together today. So how then do we cultivate the fruit of the Spirit? And by the way, all the descriptions of all the other fruits are there below. Okay, the links rather are all there. So if you're doing a Bible study or if you're asked to lead a Bible study or for your own benefits and for your own edification and encouragement, please do check them out because it will help you. I promise you, they will help you. So, fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are the characteristics. This is what Jesus displayed and a lot more. And he was the most attractive person that there was, wasn't he? People came from miles. He influenced people all over the place. They came from miles, just far and wide, just to be with him, to hear him, to just to sense who he was. What a disservice we've done to him. Many other churches, for instance, have made him boring, our Lord, boring, insipid, and impotent. Okay, so we've got the challenge that we as Christ followers are to display his character in our lives. Being like Jesus should be the aim of every Christian. I hope you agree with that. It should be like, the aim of every so-called Christian to be like Jesus, that we become an attractive person. Not attractive in the sense of the physical sense necessarily, but attractive in the sense of who we are as people because there's something of the character of Christ coming through. This is what it means to be filled with the Spirit. This is what it means, the fruit of the Spirit. In fact, Jesus said this in Acts chapter 1, uh, chapter 1, verse 8. He says this, You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses onto the ends of the earth. We will be his witnesses. Our presence should create such a positive atmosphere. Life in all its fullness, as Jesus promised us, should be part and parcel of who we are. Even when life stinks and we have issues and problems and difficulties, we still are giving off a, 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 a positive aroma because our faith and our trust is in God, who works all things together for good, those for good. All things work together for good, even the bad things, for those who are called according to his purposes. Okay, then how do we cultivate the fruit of the Spirit? The next four steps are such a key to, for your own development. The first thing is to recognize that we need to be filled with the Spirit and it's a work of grace, the grace of God. Okay, you cannot produce the fruit on your own. In fact, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, it says this, For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith, for gra by grace, okay? And this is not of your own self. It's a gift of God, not by works, so that no one could boast. So we are saved by the grace of God. We have to continue to walk our Christ-likeness by the grace of God. In other words, you and I cannot produce the fruit of the Spirit in our own effort. <laughs> there are some Christians who try and do that. Maybe I've been trying to do that in the past. And it kind of conjures up this image in me. It's like a chicken trying to lay an egg, but the egg won't come. And it's doing its best and squirting and squeeing, but the egg will not come. Why? Because it's the fruit of the Spirit, not your fruit. And it takes the grace of God for that to be produced. You may remember in my earlier videos, I said it takes more power for the fruit of the Spirit to be produced in our lives than for God to do signs and wonders. <laughs> because signs and wonders, okay, here's the reasoning, okay. The signs and wonders are all of God's domain. He can do them like that. There's no effort involved in his parts. Whereas developing the fruit of the Spirit in our lives requires our cooperation. And sadly, our flesh life keeps getting in the way, doesn't it? So therefore, it requires the grace of God to enable us to surrender to him. Uh, and then with the fruit begins to develop. 
So that's the first element that we ask the Lord to fill us with His Spirit and then we submit and surrender to Him so that the grace of God can do His work in our lives. First element. So secondly then, we are to worship the Lord. We are to worship Him with our soul, heart, soul, mind and strength. Sadly, people have a misconception about worship. Some think that worship is singing of songs. Well, it's not just singing of songs. Worship is adoration of who, G who Jesus is. Worship is loving the Lord. Worship is thanking the Lord. Worship is praising our God, that we are conscious of Him wherever we are, at work, at play, with friends, families, we are, we are conscious, we are constantly engaging to know that God is with us. Jesus asks this of Peter, do you love me? And similarly, Jesus would ask us of us, do you love me? The things that we love, we worship. So we've got the grace and the Holy Spirit. That was the first element. Secondly, is worshiping our God. Thirdly, then meditating on scripture. Now, meditation is a biblical concept and does not solely belong to the Eastern philosophy. In fact, there are more verses in the scriptures regarding meditation than study. Look them up. More on meditation than study. Yes, of course, we need to study the scriptures. It's important to do that. But study not for the sake of puffing ourselves up with more knowledge, but rather so that we are engaging with scripture, meditating on it, waiting on scripture, allowing scripture by the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit to develop the fruit in our lives. That's why Jesus, oh, the Lord encouraged Joshua in Joshua 1 verse 8. Keep this book of the law, it says, always on your lips. Meditate, not study, meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything that is written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. So we ask the Holy Spirit, we wait on the grace of God, we worship the Lord, we meditate on scripture. And then lastly, do the works that God has called you to do. Jesus said this, I only do the things that God has called me to do. That's in John chapter 5 verse 19. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, Paul says, after the grace of God, he then tells us this, for we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So the good works that God requires for us are done as a result of our salvation, not to earn salvation. That's very important to recognize that. Yes, God has prepared good works for us to do that bring glory to Him and not to us. And these good works will often require courage, Courage because we have to stand up for unrighteousness. Boldness because we need to declare who Christ is. And in our modern society, that's becoming more and more difficult. So it requires boldness and determination to follow through the calling of God upon our lives. Jesus said this because he, he, the scripture says that he set his face like a flint to go to Jerusalem because that's what God had called him to do. So these steps... These four steps prepare the heart of our soil for the fruit to grow. And the fruit has been planted in seed form when we are born again, when we accept Jesus as our Lord and our Savior. They are there in seed form, but they need to be cultivated. And the cultivation requires our effort. That's how the fruit begins to develop. <laughs> Listen to what the Apostle Peter says. He says this to Peter chapter 1, His divine power, so God has planted the seeds in our lives, has given us everything we need for a godly life through the knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. Through these, He has given us His very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. So His divine nature, His grace, His Holy Spirit has given us everything we need for a godly life. He needs to produce it in us. I'm convinced that as Christ followers, we are called to influence this world, our friends, our neighbors, our family, etc. for Him. As the Holy Spirit cultivates the fruit of the Spirit, our lives become a witness for Jesus. 
and hopefully people will say, what's different about you? Because of the aroma we give up, of the smell we give up, of who we are, we are influencers for Jesus. Now, for some, that will be good. For other, we are the aroma of death. Paul says this in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15. Our offering to God is one to be a perfume of Christ that goes out to those who have been saved and to those who have been lost. To those who have been lost, the perfume smells like death and it brings death. But to those who have been saved, it's the sweet smell of life and it brings them life. In other words, there are people who will reject you because of your biblical value system, because of who you are in Christ, that, uh, that, that, that clashes with their values and who they are, and they don't want anything to do with you. That's their problem, not yours. We are called to be an influencer. We are called to give off who Christ is. You and I, as influence are to produce the fruit of the Spirit simply by allowing the Holy Spirit to do His work as we surrender to Him. So will you let Him? Will you cultivate the fruit of the Spirit? Will you say, Lord Jesus, produce in me the character that you've called me to be. Help me to be an influencer in my sphere of domain that I bring life to people, just as you did. Lord, we bless you and we thank you. And I pray your blessing upon each person who's been listening to this video. May they sense your grace, your power, your love upon them. And you enable them to be who they are called to be. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can I encourage you again to look up all the links and to develop the fruit? Please do so because it will help you tremendously. And I'll speak to you very soon. Again, God bless you.